Well, hello everyone and welcome to another webinar in our Warrior Woman webinar series. The final one in the series, but hey, who knows, it very well could be coming back because I know that it's made a tremendous impact in the lives of so many women in the months of August and September. My name is Leanne Williams and I'm going to be your host this, this afternoon as we delve through the topic of discovering your purpose and i want to say thank you so much to everyone who has taken the time in your lunch time and i know that some people are working from home some people are on their lunch breaks in the office and you're tuning in right now i want to say a big thank you and you're very welcome to connect with us post your questions if you have any questions for any of our panelists we would love to uh, answer them and we would love to speak to you this is a conversation on discovering your purpose also, if you have not yet registered at www.betterfm.co.za, please do so because the first 1,000 people, one person could stand a chance of walking away with a 1,000 Rand engine fuel voucher and a 1,000 Rand shopping voucher at Canal Walk. And I think that's definitely worth getting involved in. So I'm pretty excited for you. We'll be announcing the winner at the end of the webinar. Now, I know a lot of people look at the word purpose and you think, what could that possibly mean? But I wrote down things that resonate for me when I think about the word purpose. Purpose is less about motivation and more about meaning. It's what you would be doing anyway, even if you didn't have to do it. You don't need money to feel the fulfillment from purpose. It's not about status. It's less about image and more about impact. It what's bring you, it's what brings you back to life at the end of a hard day or a hard experience. It's what drives you. It's your why. It's more than just achieving goals or setting a to-do list. It's what makes you truly happy. It's about what you would be doing if fear wasn't a factor. And that's what we want to do today. We want to find what we would be doing if fear wasn't a factor. And here to help us delve through this really exciting topic, I've got four incredible panelists. I'm going to start off with Karen Burt. Welcome to the Warrior Woman webinar. Karen is part of a company that's uh, called Luminosity Lab. Now, they are innovators in their unique conceptualization and presentation of various revolutionary tailor-made workshops and programs for a spectrum of audiences and age groups. They share a passion for empowering women, men and next generation of tweens, teens and young adults to explore personal awareness, gain a keen understanding of human behavior and ultimately accomplish individual limitless potential. We're here for it. Karen has 25 years of experience as a life coach and facilitator and is internationally accredited in energy psychology, human consciousness and yoga. Karen Bird, welcome to the Warrior Woman webinar. How are you, my darling? Thank you, Leanne, for that beautiful intro. And yes, hello to you and to all of your incredible listeners. It's such a joy to be here. My absolute favorite topic of all time. So I am amped, super ready, and super powered up already. Gonna be good. I can see that. I love, I love your energy. That's what I've always loved about you. Where are you currently broadcasting from? And how has the last few months been for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Cape Town in Somerset West. Um, incredible day, as we know. Um, the last five months have been an absolute roller coaster, I won't lie. I am used to speaking to people in person and to audiences that I can connect with. And so this has been a massive trans, um, transition, putting my whole business online. But proud to say that we've now managed to connect with people not just in South Africa but internationally now and for me honestly um, abundant blessings in in weird little ways so I would have never been pushed out of my comfort zone as I have been um, as I have been now so absolutely incredible is an organizational culture strategist. She runs her own consultancy brand. She's a workplace transformation specialist. Um, she's a strategist, she's a facilitator, she's an advocate for the equality of black professionals who are often suppressed on a corporate ladder. She's made a life, it's, she's made it actually her life journey and mission to fight for equality 
and equality in the workplace. She's the author of the book called We Are the Ones We Need, The War on Black Professionals in Corporate South Africa that delves into the challenges faced by black professionals in South Africa's corporate environment. Sitle Bolani, welcome to the Warrior Women webinar. So good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. What, where are you currently broadcasting from and how has the last few months and weeks been like? You're looking fabulous, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm in Johannesburg. Um, the last few months have been interesting. I mean, it's been tough because, uh, you know, everything that's been on my to-do list for 2020 has kind of been thrown into disarray quite a bit. Um, but I've appreciated the time because it's given me the space to be able to come back to myself and reconnect with what's important to me. So I, I, I can't say that 2020 has been a horrible year at all. Exactly. Well, I love that. We're going to be delving into everything that you have to share. I'm so excited about it. But our next panelist is the head of brand and sponsorship for Engine. She is a seasoned marketing strategist with over 18 years of experience from retail and petro petroleum sectors. She is obsessed with aligning and quantifying brand marketing value to business value. Bulela Mkandiwire, welcome to the Warrior Woman webinar. Oh, you're muted. We can't hear you. There we go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, no. Great. You, my darling? Thank you so much. Thanks for that introduction and thank you for this platform. I think uh, spaces like this are much needed and we really uh, need to be continuing them beyond August. Um, I'm well, I'm excited, I'm energized. And so thank you to, uh, for this platform. I think this is the content that we all need and that we've signed up for. And our final panelist, from writing her first song at the age of 12 to becoming the front woman of one of the country and the world's most sensational bands, I'm talking about the award-winning chart-topping electronic live band known as Good Luck. They're also well-known for their charity and socio and economic impact work that they've been doing through their Good Luck Cares Foundation, which has a focus on improving the lives of those struggling with poverty as well as a big focus on education and scholarships. Jules, welcome to the Warrior Woman webinar. Pleasure to talk to you, my darling. Also, I'm here. we go. <laughs> How are you doing? How is life where you are? You're also based in Cape Town. Yes, it's lovely sunny day here in Cape Town. Um, I'm tucked in the studio and yeah, pretty good. Wonderful stuff. Well, it's so good to have all of our panelists here. It's so good to have you wherever you are joining us as well. We're talking about purpose at a time when I think it is most needed. And I'm so happy that this particular webinar with this particular theme is happening in the month of September, which we all know is spring month. And with spring month comes spring cleaning. A lot of us put away the old, you know, kind of like thick, hot clothing, and we gravitate, gravitate towards the warmer things. And I think a lot of us are spring cleaning our minds as well, trying to get rid of the lockdown fatigue and all of the cobwebs that come with that and embrace a sense of newness and a sense of purpose as well. So Karen, I'm going to start off with you. Do you think now, particularly at this time, more women are reassessing where they are at in life? Yeah, 200%. Honestly, I think um, there's, there's something that happened with the, with the pandemic that I think has been incredibly powerful, incredibly valuable, is that we, we were forced into a place where we had to sit with ourselves and we had to sit with our thoughts and we had to sit with a lot of things that we're not normally having to do. So I absolutely believe and know that, you know, women are, and everybody actually, but women in particular are thinking to themselves, you know, um, there's got to be more to my life than just being a mom or just being a daughter or just being a sister um, or just being a wife. You know, we, we really, we really are looking at, um, at stepping into our power properly now. Yeah. Can I ask you, when was that aha moment for you? And maybe there were a few aha moments and you just have to think about it for a second, because I know a little bit about your life story. I know a little bit about the challenges that you went through early on and to see where you are at right now really just blows my mind. So do you want to maybe share that with our audience? The Karen 
um, that, that, that you were before you stepped into this role as the person that you are right now? So Leanne, you, as you know, I mean, I was, I was in an incredibly um, awful, abusive marriage for about 14 years. And actually, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, of asking the question, um, how is this happening for me instead of why is this happening to me? And I do believe that there's lessons and blessings in everything in life. But it was actually because of that marriage that I realized that my self-worth was so low, my um, self-esteem was so low, I was tolerating a lot of things that um, nobody should have ever tolerated in their, in their lives. And that aha moment happened one night um, when I actually had a gun pointed at my head and um, I was about to be taken out with my, myself and my two children. And at that point, I knew that I was going to dedicate my life to a woman initially first, but really just to make sure that I never missed an opportunity to tell another woman that she was special, she was important, she was valuable, she was powerful, she was incredible, she was amazing, she was beautiful and she was worth it. So um, that was my that was my big aha moment. And yes, I think often our, our aha moments come to us in unusually packaged gifts and um, from unusual people as well. But yes, that was my that was my turning point in where I realized what I wanted to do with my life. And that's why I wanted to ask you that because I think so many women, especially because of lockdown, might for the first time in their lives be realizing that they are living uh, a life that they don't choose, that they don't want, that they are not happy in, that they don't find purpose or meaning in as well. And they need those steps and those tools to be able to put in place um, measures in order to get out of that life that carries no meaning or joy or happiness for them. What would your words of advice be? Do it. <laughs> just do it. I think I'm going to give the, 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 the Nike tick there. But, you know, I, I just, I really believe that if, um, if we listen to our intuition and to our gut, um, I, that's the one thing that I've learned over the years is that my gut and my intuition has never, ever lied to me. And if I have to even think back to on my wedding day, I was, my gut was still saying, don't do it. So my intuition knew something that my, my head and my, my heart didn't want to listen to. Um, so I, I just think, um, and, and actually not think, I, I know that at the edge of our comfort zone um, is, is huge opportunity. And we just take that little step into our power. Um, it's so worth it. It's so worth it, really is. Wow, powerful at the edge of that comfort zone. Thank you so much, Karen. I'm going to be coming back to you in a young second. Rebecca sending through a message saying, awesome to be surrounded by these powerful women this afternoon. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Now, Sihle, when I did your introduction, I did say these words. I said, Sihle has made it her life journey and mission to fight for equality and equality in the workplace as well. What was the aha moment that happened to make this your mission and your journey, your life journey? Because sometimes something big needs to happen for us to find this thing that we're going to make our life work. Absolutely. Um, I have, I spent a good portion of my career within corporate South Africa. Um, and as a young black woman, there were so many different experiences that I had. Um, but it wasn't until I actually had an experience where I was reporting into a boss who was incredibly abusive to me in the workplace and being able to see an entire system, the entire organization supporting and protecting this behavior infuriated me. Um, but also to be able to see how other black professionals were too afraid to speak up because everybody's worried about losing their jobs, losing their income. We all have, we all have all of these responsibilities without a job. I had no plan. Um, I just knew that I had to get out. But I realized that the blessing in that was that I was now in a position to tell our story without fear, without worrying about being hauled in front of a disciplinary committee or being fired because I spoke up and shared what's happening within the organization. Um, and initially, I thought that that would just end at the book. But the more people read the book and the more stories I hear, the more I, you know, I'm so moved 
to do something to address the issues of injustice and inequality that exist within the workplace. And I'm very happy that you say journey because that's exactly what it is. There is no, <laughs> there's no final destination for me with this work because we're yeah, literally yeah. trying to undo centuries of oppression and inequality mm -hmm. in society and within the workplace. Yeah, it's amazing that out of that very difficult, uncomfortable, challenging time in your life came probably the best work of your life, where you get to empower mm -hmm. so many people on a daily basis. And I'm sure that wasn't even what the point of it was. You just wanted to get your story out and tell your story, which I'm so happy that you did. But the reason why it resonates with so many people, because if you are black, if you are a person of color, but also if you are a woman, the playing field is so different for you. The challenges that you face on a daily basis are so different for you. I resonate with that. I resonate coming from a company where I knew I would never be the head of that department. I would never have a team. I would never be a team leader because people were either, you know, I don't know, threatened by me, threatened by, you know, the qualifications or the education that I had and were always going to keep me in that place. For the women right now, who are experiencing that same thing, who are experiencing knowing that they work in a company where they are never going to excel, where they are never going to be the boss, <laughs> where they are never going to pass a certain level, where they're being kept just there. What would your words of advice be to them? I think there's a number of things that come into play. Um, the first thing for, is, you know, so many people kind of relinquish control of their careers to their employers. And I think it's important for people to remember that you, you are a partner in directing your career. Um, and so having those conversations with, with your employers, with your line managers, so that you're very clear in terms of articulating what needs to happen for you to reach each different level. What milestones do you need to have? Because then if you meet those milestones and you're not getting promoted and you're not getting appointed to certain positions, then you have something to go back on to be able to back yourself up. Um, the other thing is that it's important for people to be able to reflect about whether the organization that they're in is actually the right fit for them. So often when we yeah. enter organizations, we are so concerned about, oh, I've got to be the right person. I've got to be a cultural fit. You know, we are the ones that are auditioning for the organization, but actually it's both ways. And sometimes organization is not good enough for you. And so these are the types of decisions that we need to be making. But I also think it's important for, for us to start, you know, um, embracing a culture of giving ourselves time and space to think. So often we're on the move. We're always chasing the next thing. We're chasing new targets. We've got to be better than we were yesterday. We've got to be more productive. And it's insane. And I think it's so important for us to create space and hold space for ourselves to be able to think, because only then can we truly understand what it is that is important to us. What kind of environment do we want to be in? Maybe the goals that I had for my career a year ago are not actually what I want. It's just what society has told me I'm supposed to want. You know, and having that space to think helps you to realign your needs and your wants with what you actually were intended to do, what your purpose actually is. And I think, you know, a lot of us focus on the negatives of COVID-19 and the lockdown, and truly there have been many negatives, but the positives of it is we are I think taking responsibility and control of areas that we maybe had just learned to go with the flow. You know, we're all involved in the rat race. We're just going with the flow. One day is one day. I'll deal with it one day. And now we're at a place where life has slowed down to such a point where we're realizing that no one's really coming to save us, if you could say that. You have to save yourself. You have to take responsibility for your life you've got to get out of those situations. And I know sometimes it's easier said than done because people ask, but Leanne, how? So Bulela, because you are part of this incredible brand that is creating a platform for women to share their stories about where they are in, where they are at in their lives and how they got to be where they are today. And I think it's so wonderful that these uh, play it forward stories are being told. <coughs> Where do we begin when we have slowed down, we've had time now to take stock of our lives and we realize that there's a lot of things because sometimes we, uh, what's the word, we hand over responsibility, we outsource, 
you know, the responsibility that we should be taking for our lives to other people, whether it be our husbands or our families or our, you know, significant others. Where do we even begin to start? It's a great question, Leanne. Uh, we start with ourselves. We start internally. And I think to your earlier question around uh, lockdown, uh, that's why for me it was such a gift because where else could you go but internally? And so even the journey to find your purpose starts with yourself, understanding who you are, what do you want, what inspires you, what do you aspire towards, why are you actually here? Um, because each of us, I believe, is a puzzle piece in a bigger uh, world, global puzzle. And each of us have a unique contribution that we are here to add. We've gone through so many odds to get to the points that we are at each of us we've got our own journeys our own stories and we've gotten to this point because we needed to get to this point in order to leave the world with what we came to be um, and isn't it amazing how when you show up authentically and you show up as your true self in purpose and on purpose that it's magic yes. and it's actually normal to show up similar to, to Leanne and similar to somebody else but when you actually show up in a space authentic that's the magic um, and I think yeah. that's part of why we are struggling so much with the lockdowns with the pandemics with the global warming and all the other issues that we face and challenges that we face as humanity is because we've lost our way in who we are and why we are here so you definitely start internally and like Sifia said it's a journey I think no one has arrived or is fully there every day is a lesson and a deeper um, step towards that journey but you need to understand what is your unique contribution what are you here to leave behind and I think simple things like uh, if I didn't have bills to pay if I didn't have to work what is that thing I would want to be doing for free what is that thing that gives me energy versus saps energy from me so um, yeah you, you have to start internally yeah to be honest, if I didn't have to worry about paying the bills, I'll probably try and become a professional dancer as in a ballroom and Latin dance and go to Blackpool just once in my life. That's what I aspire to do. But alas, life is happening. Talking about dancing, a woman that has kept South Africa and the world dancing since the band started in 2011, Juliet Harding from Good Luck. My love, you have had an <laughs> incredible career and have an incredible career and you've managed to maintain such a powerful presence and space in an industry that let's be honest is still very much male dominated mm. It is, you know, I, I, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, I, I say it all the time, actually. I talk about it when I'm on stage, you know. I, I often find myself at these music festivals where it's like three days of music, lineups stacked with musicians, and I will literally be the only female uh, musician on the stage for the whole three days, you know, and this is crazy to me. I, I, I don't know. I, I still, I'm still trying to figure out why it is the case. I think, I think there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of reason for women to kind of, shy away from the industry um because there's a, there is a lot of uh, you know the wrong focus when it comes to women especially in the pop industry um it still exists but slowly but surely i feel we're coming out of that space and um more and more women are being recognized for talent versus like physical appearance and uh, and things are starting to shift and change slowly but it's it's still very much male dominated so it's still very much a struggle to to be a woman in this industry how have you continued to find meaning and search for meaning in your life? Because I know that um, you've re kind of realized that music is your opportunity to make a difference in the world. And you certainly have made a difference. Is that what gives you a sense of purpose? To some degree, yes. Um, but I think this lockdown has really helped me because um, I'll be honest with you, before lockdown, you know, with a, with a very busy touring schedule and a lot of success and a lot of um, my life kind of planned out year on year, just busy and hectic all the time, I, I had lost my way um, a little bit and I was feeling very depressed and I didn't really know why. I, I didn't have any like, reason to feel sad, but I was waking up in the morning feeling like, I'm a bit sad today, you know, and, and for, like logically I couldn't really go, well, you have a right to feel sad because everything's going well. but I was sad. And when the lockdown happened and that first morning when I woke up and I could hear the birds and I could see the mountain and I could like, it just was quiet. I was like, it was such a weird feeling, but 
suddenly things just started to shift around me. And, you know, one of the things that you spoke about earlier, one of the things I've been wanting to do for so long, but I'd put on the back burner because of being busy was just, just reconnecting with people and, and doing a little bit of work in the communities that I used to serve when I was studying. So I've gotten back out into that space and, um, you know, and, and at the moment we're doing a lot of work in the communities uh, just to kind of bridge the, the education and poverty gap that we see that's so hectic in this country that a lot of people I think have, have chosen to ignore for a long time. So, we, so we've been out there just working with people and trying to connect with people and it's, it's been amazingly rewarding and, and finally I'm feeling like I've got my music purpose, it's always there and I'm doing it, but like I've, I've created a space for something that I really have always wanted to do and now I'm finding the time to do it and I'm happier than I've ever been like in the last like five to six years which is interesting yeah that, that makes me that, that's amazing to me it makes me so happy because I think every single one of us were and maybe still are feeling what you felt um, an extreme sense of tiredness we're not as busy as what we once were but we're tired you know there's a fatigue mm. that is on everyone um, just feeling like mm. life is you have no control over life and the fact that you are saying now in this space you are happier yeah. than you've been in the last five or six yeah. years is incredible how do we get that <laughs> what needs to happen <laughs> You know, I, I, I think you need to listen, like, like Belinda was saying, you need to listen to, you need to have a, like a quiet conversation with yourself and listen to what it is you really want. It's like echoing the same sentiments. All, all these beautiful ladies are saying the same thing, you know, and, um, and, uh, and figure out what that is. And then don't be afraid to take the plunge, you know. Um, I think uh, it, it, it's, it's a wild thing. I mean, I honestly, my sister said this to me the other day and I totally resonated with her. You know, she said if, if, if at the end of her life, she was asked which year she could have over again. And maybe this is, maybe this is completely a privileged, you know, uh, thing to say because she's managed to keep herself afloat. But she would say she'd have 2020 over again. Um, because she, for the first time she's managed to spend time with her kids. She's managed to, like, you know, just be, be present. Um, and I think like a lot of us have lost that presence, that sense of presence, because our minds are running, we're thinking, we overthink, we're overanalyzing, we're, over, we're, we're, we're chasing nothing. That's the bottom line. We're chasing and chasing and chasing. And actually, there is nothing to chase. And then you realize at some point that it, it's, it, you're never going to be happy unless you can actually find, find happiness and purpose in what you're doing in that very moment and be present in that moment and just enjoy that, you know? I love that. I love that. Sisha, I want to come back to you. Um, your book, We Are the Ones We Need. Such a powerful title. Such a powerful title. And the reason why I said no one's coming to save us, you know, uh, we have to step up and save ourselves, especially as women. Yes, we have partners in life and all of that. But as women, we are the ones that we need. Tell us more about the premise of this book and why you feel it's so important that people need to read it. Um, so, you know, when I was writing this book, uh, one of the things that really stood out for me was just that we all go through these challenges and silos. Put up in wanting to put on a this front that I'm great. Life's great. I'm doing fantastic. I've got it all together. Um, and I remember for myself, I remember th looking around at my peers and thinking, I'm really not getting this life thing right. <laughs> because everybody else seems to be doing perfectly fine. Everybody seems to be thriving. Clearly, I'm failing. I missed the memo somewhere along the way. Um, and so I really intended to write a book that is as authentic as possible, that reveals my insecurities, that reveals my uncertainties and shows that I literally did not have to get that. You know, we figured it out as what was important to me was to be able to, um, you know, give rise to a conversation where people feel safe and say, okay, I don't have enough of that. Because essentially, we are the ones that are the, going to be creating that change. Like you said earlier, nobody's coming to save us. And this is something that I repeat often to people because I get a lot of people will say, I'm having this issue at work, um, help me fix it. Or what are you going to do to help change corporates? Or what are you, and I'm like, no, no. I'm not Superman. I'm not coming to save you. 
I'm here to help you advance the conversation, but you actually have to do something yeah. yourself. You have to get involved yourself and get your hands dirty. Um, and I think too many people are, have kind of decided that they don't have the power to do anything to change their circumstances. And I really want this book to encourage people, to remind people that actually you can do something to change your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And now is the time. We have the time. We can't say, oh, I've got 50 million events to go to. Now is the time. We have it. Karen, just if you will allow me to go back to the story that you were telling us about your life. I, I feel like there's so many women that I've spoken to in the last few weeks since these webinars started that are in, um, that are in very unhappy circumstances in their lives. They don't necessarily and for whatever reason it might be it might be relationships it might be finances women are the cornerstones of their homes and their communities and so often we forget about ourselves we forget about the fact that if our families and homes and communities are need to be thriving we need to thrive as well and we've put ourselves on the back burner for so long that for the first time we're seeing it in front of us because we have nowhere else to run we're at home 24 7 what would your words of advice be for that woman who is, you know, just looking for, I don't know, looking to find her sense of value and her sense of meaning, uh, the impact that she's going to make in the world today? What would you say to her? Well, you know, I think what, I mean, the ladies on this, on this panel are just have shared so much incredible wisdom um, and there's, there's so many golden nuggets that each of them have, um, have given us now. But, you know, um, I want to just take a step back to what you said there. Um, when, when we are in these uncomfortable situations and um, Zikri said it as well, you know, you kind of feel like you're the only one that hasn't got your, got your life together. Um, I think there's a there's a lot of women out there that are doing exactly the same thing, and I would I would get dressed every morning and I would put on my gloves and I would put on my heels and I would show up for the world, but inside I was dying. And you know I think that the most important thing that we as women can do, and I'm finding this more and more and more actually with um, a lot of my young young women, and when I say young women, they're in their sort of thirties, they're young mommies, they're career women, and they are very, very much realizing that they have given themselves no self-love. And there's a big difference between self-indulgence and self-love. Self self-indulgence is the bubble bath and the champagne. That can't fix all the stuff on the outside. Um, we have to work with what's in, what, what is happening in our souls and what is happening in our hearts. And I think that in, in these situations, what women need to be doing is we cannot give to our families, to our um, communities, to our, um, our workplace, if we are not already full ourselves. Once we are full ourselves, then we have more to give to everybody, to everybody around us. So for me, what I would say to women is, first of all, um, take care of you first, um, fill your cups first, and then we have much bigger cups to be able to, um, to distribute and to share with, um, to share with others. I got a message here saying, um, uh, it's from Anonymous, how do you balance everything? Where do you draw the line between work and family? It saddens me. I'm going through COVID stress, menopause as the sole breadwinner with a young son. It's tough. So good. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, whoever wants to jump in, but you can start first, Karen. Um, I, I always make sure that I start my day right. Um, and I really make sure that I set myself up for a great day, even if it's a whole lot of me men mental mind washing that I, um, that I do. But I think, you know, I, I, I agree it is tough. It is hard. And I think the hardest part, the menopause part of, I have to be perfectly honest with you, but, um, I, I do think that, um, to create balance is, is essential in our lives. And, you know, um, it's, it's just important to prioritize ourselves at some point. And as women, we're always taught to put ourselves last. And I really don't agree with that at all. I really think that there is space in our day for us to just give ourselves a little bit of self-love first. And, you know, then, then it's okay after that. 
I can agree with you more. Bolela, I want to speak to you very, very quickly. Um, the Play It Forward campaign that NGEN has started is such a powerful one for me because it really is about sharing stories, sharing women's stories and listening to Zihle and Karen and Juliet and even yourself. Is there something powerful that happens when we share our stories? Because I want to go back to what Zihle said about how you look at everyone around you and everyone is just living their best lives. When I look on Instagram, people are so happy. They are just doing the most, doing the things. And I sit and I look at myself and I'm just like, wow, I am clearly not doing what they're doing. When in all truth, people are posting a single moment of what's happening in their whole lives you know and how just looking at that picture can make you feel so i don't know you know like you're not achieving like you're not doing anything of worth but these stories are real these stories are true these stories say hey she's just like me she's going through the same things that i'm going through so how important is authenticity and allowing yourself to be vulnerable as a woman in this day and age because Sometimes we're like, oh no, I've got to be strong. I've got to be cold. I've got to be hard in order to get ahead. When the truth is the softness that we are as women is so important to embrace at a time now more than ever. Absolutely, Leanne, absolutely. Um, and I think you've said it's um, spot on in that, you know, there's a reason why we were made to be soft and to be intuitive and to care and to be able to sit and share. I mean, women, we've got such a beautiful gift and ability. You could be sitting at a bus stop or waiting for a flight or anywhere in a public space and another woman could sit next to you. You could get up there knowing and having shared, you know, marital challenges, um, struggles with raising your kids in a way that men could never because they're just not wise in that way so it's it's so important for us to go back to who we are and why we are like that it's not a mistake that we're like that um, it may feel like that at times within uh, certain environments that reward hard uh, aggressive type um, uh, behavior but I think showing up authentically you can never go wrong you can never forget you can always be consistent because it is who you are it is how you are wired. and seeing these stories from the different women across uh, 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 play it forward is inspirational it, it tells me and people like me and people like the women on uh, play it forward that are being featured that it's possible I've done it I've been able to get to a certain point so even if you're sitting there and you're worried about whether you can or not, here's an example of, with, of the fact that you can. Um, and I think also just gratitude. I think that the thing that also comes across strongly for me is a sense of gratitude because let's face it, gratitude breeds, it expands, it creates more. The more you find, even in your uh, situation where you might see limitedness, if you focus on the things that you are grateful for, you actually forget the things that limit that are limiting and you focus and breed and grow the things, more things that you can be grateful for. So authenticity is everything. It's, it's, it's so important here. Well, I want to start with some of the, um, the tools that women can start incorporating in their lives right now. And I also don't want to, um, you know, not include the men because I know that there are also some men that are watching right now as well. But what are the things that we can include in our daily lives to help us move towards finding and discovering that sense of purpose in the world, especially in the face of COVID-19, the fact that more women have lost their jobs. It's definitely uh, affected women disproportionately. Um, out of the 3 million South Africans that have lost their jobs, 2 million of them have been women. Um, in terms of finances, in terms of relationships, in terms of gender-based violence, women have experienced the brunt of the negative end of COVID-19 and the lockdown, everything that has come with it. So from each one of you, I'm going to start with you, Sihle, uh, pertaining to the workplace and pertaining to family life. Where would you say you would feel women need to start in finding and discovering their meaning and their sense of purpose? Um, I think there's, there's two key things to me. The one is, you know, so many women who, 
you know, work and balance is one that comes out quite often. And even when I see women being interviewed, the question of, oh, but how do you balance it all? seems to always come up but nobody ever asks a man how they balance everything um yeah. and you know i think it creates um a, a, a disconnect because the reality is that there is no balance it's about prioritization yeah. and what's a bigger priority today may not be your bigger priority tomorrow and i think that that's the type of thinking that we need to start adopting um, and that it's okay because sometimes my child will take precedence over everything else and sometimes my work will need to take the lead um, at a particular moment. Um, but I also think that, you know, now's the time for women to embrace being a lot more assertive in the workplace. Uh, one of the things that I'm really trying to help women unlearn is this culture of humility right? Um, you have to be humble, so you have to downplay yourself. You have to downplay your achievements and your capabilities because you don't want to be seen as arrogant. You don't want to be seen as you, too big for your boots, you know? Um, and I, th I think we need to change that. We need to embrace the fact that we're brilliant at what we do and we need to toot our own horns and we need to say i have delivered xyz and therefore i feel that i'm deserving of a promotion for these reasons this is the value that i've contributed to this organization and the same applies when you are going for interviews you need to be able to very clearly increase your abilities the value that you are going to add into an organization but also be very clear about the fact that you have expectations of that organization as well, because it's not a one-way relationship. Um, and I think that that's a very good way to start taking back a lot of the power that we have kind of given away over the years, because we feel we must just be grateful <laughs> for the opportunities that are yeah. given to us. Yeah. I'm going to throw this question at you from Judith Zizel, who says, I'm a mom with three kids. I want to study, but I can't balance everything, meaning work, family, school, kids, etc. I have had to postpone my semesters three times. How do I balance everything? Or like you said, it's about prioritizing. It really is about prioritizing. Um, and it's a difficult thing to say because obviously I don't know what's happening in Judith's life or how many free hours she has a day. Um, but you know, I think what lockdown has done for a lot of people who've been able to work from home is that you're saving a lot of time on not being stuck in traffic. And so you're finding more time, more hours, more minutes in the day to do other things that give you joy, that give you fulfillment, or that help you with your self-development. And I think it's really about sit down and actually literally write down every single thing that you do every single day because then you'll be able to stay talk, spending your time on the things that are important to you, because then you need to prioritize. Um, and there are some things that you might enjoy doing, but they're not a priority right now, if you want to focus on your studies. And so you can push them aside for a moment so that you're able to kind of pull time together to be able to study for yourself. And it is difficult, um, especially when you are a mom and you have kids. I mean, I'm a single mom, so I totally get it. Um, I have online courses that I've signed up for and I keep just skipping my assignments, keep ignoring all of the reminders because I just, <laughs> I'm not a thing of mine right now. And that's okay too. It's okay to not be able to. It's okay to feel like you don't have the capacity at the moment. You know, you know, you know, doing anything wrong. Um, I think taking care of yourself first, your own emotional and mental most important thing. And then once you found your groove, you can then look at what next you can do for yourself. Yeah. Talking about doing things for yourself, Jules, I don't know if we can talk about this because I didn't clear it up with you before the time, but I'm just going to because I was fascinated about it. You recently took on the medical aid industry when you were needing to have a mm -hmm. procedure um, that wasn't covered by medical aid. And it was quite interesting that one of the things that was said there was the regulations were written by men when it comes to women's bodies. And I, I love mm. that you fought for something that for so long we had all just, I think, accepted and kept quiet about. And why do you think mm. that this is a time now more than ever, just like what Sile is saying, you know, you know, quit the humility thing, why we need to stand up for ourselves, why we need to, you know, ask the questions that maybe we've been afraid to ask for so long in order to 
get answers about something that only we as women really should know about is our bodies. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're coming out of a period, obviously, quite abruptly um, that has been sort of there for hundreds of years, which, which where we had very different roles. And, and suddenly there is this, you know, there's this new wave of, of women being able to make decisions. I mean, like on, on Cecil's point, like, I don't think, you know, you necessarily have to believe that you need to conform to this ideology that as a woman you need to be a mother and someone who works you know you can pick a lane you can be a mother or someone who works you know I don't think you need to say just because I'm a woman I have to be a mother or just because I'm a woman I have to have a career or both like it's your decision at the end of the day you don't have to make yourself so busy you don't have to take on so much you can decide you know and I think that's empowering in itself um but yeah I mean with this 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 thing I woke up from my breast reduction surgery and realized like that I was having to pay for it, that they were considering it cosmetic. I was in a lot of pain and I was having spinal issues. And I just thought like, this is so strange to me that I have to justify this physical pain, um, potential spinal, you know, surgery down the line to um, a bunch of, 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 of people who are telling me that it cannot be seen as nothing but cosmetic. And, and then I, I realized this must have been written, written by a man because if they, if they knew the pain, they would put it on the list, you know, um, had, engaged with medical aids, got this thing, went a bit viral. I've done an update about it today, actually. And, um, and you know, one of the awesome things, I think, is that they are now putting these, um, they're challenging uh, the Medical Schemes Council, who actually has a policy in place. It doesn't just pertain to women. That says if there is a procedure that doesn't pertain to a woman and a man, then it cannot be something that's mandatory, which is ridiculous because we have completely different bodies. We have ovaries, they don't, you know what I mean? So there's, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So finally, these conversations are starting to be had. And I think it's the responsibility of, um, yeah, you know, as many kind of um, people with influence out there to, to challenge these, these social norms, but it's, it's, it's a journey, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. And the good thing is that we're starting to have these dialogues. Um, but I don't think it's about putting men down. I don't believe in that I, I, at all. I think it's about, I think it's about, um, you know, like Bulela said, it's about accepting that we're beautiful, nurturing, feminine energy, and they are different energy. We're yin and yang. How do we work together and respect each other and not try to be like each other, just respect each other and love each other. Yeah, absolutely. But they, but they also do need to be a part of the, the conversation. You know, I find too many times we yeah. say, um, you know, women for women and women supporting women, but we can do all of mm -hmm. that. We still need for men to come on board and be a part of the conversation yeah. for things to truly change. Because we'll be out here, yeah. you know, doing our things and they'll be out there doing their things. And meanwhile, we're doing nothing together. We got a question from Monique Van Sitters who says, what advice would you give someone in their 20s still trying to figure out what my purpose is? Karen, would you like to take that one or Bulela? Sure, um, I, I'll, I'll take have a stab it. <laughs> okay, I'll go and then oh, perhaps yeah. you can. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I would say, Monique, that it's important to, as I said, to start with yourself, um, to stay curious, also to get help and to to get a sense of um, your strengths, what are you good at, if you aren't clear about those yet, solicit feedback. Um, it's important to also listen to your body because I think within your body, there is so much there that already carries all the answers that you need. Your soul knows already what, um, what your mind doesn't. Um, so tap into and listen to what your intuition says, listen to what uh, feels right for yourself. When you're doing something and you're really excited about it and it brings you energy, you look forward to it, what are those things? Don't worry about monetizing it as yet and worrying about what, how it will pay the bills. Just focus first step um, in connecting to what that thing is that really gives you energy. Talking to people who are living their purpose, who are already on the journey, would also help quite um, a lot. And I think one of the key things for me is suspending fear. I think fear will cripple you. Fear will block your ability to think, to act.
Uh, well, we are back. You know what? In these very, very daunting and uncertain times, we kind of just have to go with the flow. And now that everything is being done virtually, you have to go with the flow with things like load shedding and connections dropping, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we just had to return once more just to thank our amazing panelists for their time and for availing themselves and their knowledge. Jules, I know that you need to jump on a plane at two o'clock today. So before we head out, would you just like to give all of those viewers that are still around just your words of inspiration and advice for every single woman who is in these very scary times trying to make her way through the world and find her sense of meaning and purpose as well I think just have fun man you know um, life fear I, I love what Leila said about fear it's it's such a, it can seem to be such an insurmountable thing you know but um, sometimes you just have to relax and enjoy the crisis um, and go with it, you know, it, times are going to be hard, times are going to be good. Um, if you can try and learn to enjoy the difficult times, I know as crazy as that might sound, uh, I think you'll find your, your life just starts opening up a little bit. Um, and the more that you can just try and have fun with your life, um, you know, better, just enjoy it. Like it comes from inside you and no one else can make you have fun or make you not have fun. It's, it's, it's your decision to make. So oh, that's my, my parting words, I think. And it is such a blessing. Jules, thank you so much. I know that we have to bid you farewell. Fly safely. And uh, hopefully we'll be catching up with you very, very soon. Lots of love, Mwah, my darling. Lots thank of love. you so much. Bye. Jules doing the most, needing to jump on a plane as well. Bulela. Any words of advice for the women that are tuning in right now? I've just been reading the comments in this time that we took when we had a little bit of a connection break. So many women finding so much inspiration and hope in the things that we've been saying. As we make our way through the rest of 2020, the lockdown is being eased. We're kind of venturing out more again. What would you like to inspire the women with? I would just like to say, stay curious and stay open. Um, mistakes are learning opportunities, opportunity to learn and to do better. Um, we beat ourselves up very easily and very quickly as women. Let's stop doing that to ourselves. Let's be kinder to ourselves. The love we show to one another and to others is the love we must start with ourselves um, first. So pour from a full cup, stay curious. I think um, a book that I've read recently that's really uh, made a huge impact for me is The Power of Now. And uh, really staying present and staying in the moment and not worrying so much about tomorrow and yesterday, but really staying clear on right now. What do I have power over and what can I surrender up? And lastly, to surrender to your purpose, uh, give into it, let it be, let it take over and allow it to lead you and let yourself be all you are here to be because the world needs what you came to give it. Wow, that's powerful. I just want to say that there's a message from Anonymous who says, thanks for the awesome show. What would you say to a 60-year-old single woman in the hospitality industry to empower herself? And I think I cottoned on to the, to the, to the number there, 60-year-old. Um, and it's something that I say to my mom all the time. I say, just because you're a certain age doesn't mean that you're out of the game, you know? Um, it just means that we have to reimagine things in a different way, but there's still so much that you have to give and offer to the world. And maybe now, because all the industries are hard hit, entertainment, hospitality, you know, so many industries are shut or hard hit. Everyone needs to reimagine a different way of doing things. And the fact that you're 60 just means that you're 60 and yeah. fabulous, Anonymous. That's all that I'm saying. Karen Burt, what words of inspiration do you have for our women as we bring our webinar to a close? Did you choose me next? Because you know I'm almost 60. Is that, is that, is that why? I that was, that was, that was, that was the same thing. Why? That was <laughs> Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to our six-year-old lady and I would just say to her, first of all, um, it's never, ever, ever too late to go after your passion, go after your purpose. And um, I, I think that better, better, better now than, than, than ever. Um, so I, I, I'm going to leave our, your viewers and our listeners um, with something that's maybe a little bit of a practical um, tool. And... I think that there's a big difference between passion and purpose. Sometimes we're blessed that we are able to 
do our purpose and our passion together, but very often um, our passion is what gives us a, a feeling, our purpose is what it is that we are in this world to do, and our purpose always has to go back to how are we helping others? Um, how am I adding value to another person's life? So I have a mantra that I use and I apply my life to, and it'll, it'll sit very well with um, what Palelo is saying about um, us with other women. And my mantra that I, I work from is, I am a part of everybody that I meet. And that humbles me every day of my life because it reminds me that an interaction that I have with a lady in um, a supermarket or with the, the gentleman that takes my, my trash away or with somebody, a CEO of a company, um, I have an opportunity in that moment that I find never see them again to change their life positively for the better. So it might be a smile, it might be a compliment, but I'm a part of all that I meet. Um, and that is, that is what our purpose is, is that how am I adding value to another human, human being's life? So that's what I would say. That's something that we can all, we can all apply to our lives. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. Sihle, and you as we end off, what words of encouragement and inspiration would you love to leave our ladies with? Um, I think the first thing is don't overthink it because you have space to let your soul speak to you. I think for so, so often we try and think, okay, it must be, it must be this, or it must be in this type of space. And we rattle ourselves trying to figure it out, but allow it to come to you. I think the second thing oh. for me is that even our work and purpose, that doesn't mean that life gets easier. It doesn't mean that things get simpler. Oftentimes we are walking and so embrace that as part of the purpose because it's working to bring out the best in you. We talk so much about how diamonds need to go through all of these intense processes in order for them to shine as splendidly as we love to see them. And so we should embrace that as well. And the last thing for me would be, particularly for women, say no more often. No. Without explaining it, just saying it, without feeling guilty about it, say no a lot more often because we say yes to far too many things that don't serve us. 100%. Thank you so much. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And with that, we're going to bring our incredible Warrior Woman webinar to a close. Thank you so much, Jules, who just had to leave, Sihle, Karen, Valela. Thank you for an hour of tremendous growth and eye-opening moments as well. Aha moments, if I can say that. It has been absolutely incredible. And I hope that this is a platform that we will be able to continue because if I can tell you one thing, I've been in this industry for a long, long time. This that has happened not only today, but over the last few weeks is truly what I've been purposeful and passionate about my whole life so sometimes it takes us a while to get to where we want to be but when we get there that is the aha moment that this is something that i've always wanted to do be surrounded by incredible powerful women that are making a difference on a daily basis to empower and uplift the lives of other women so this is a moment in itself that i am super super grateful for thank you thank you thank you to our beautiful ladies uh quickly Sihle, anybody who wants to get your book how do they get their hands on it they can visit my website sihlebolani.com i have a tab uh books and if you scroll down to the bottom there are some links to some distributors Fabulous stuff. Karen, Bert, anything interesting coming up over the next few weeks and months that we can um, get a sneak peek of? It'll all be on the website, Leanne, uh, luminositylab.org. So it'll, it's always, everything's always posted up, posted up there. But thank, thank you very much for having me. Oh, it is an absolute pleasure. Bulela, anything that Engine, other than playing it forward and just inspiring us on a daily basis with this wonderful campaign, anything else that we can look forward to? 
We do um, have amazing uh, projects lined up. We will share in uh, due course. We don't want to uh, share too early. Um, but I think for me, what's important before we dump off um, is to just say thank you, Leanne, for holding uh, the space so gracefully for us um, throughout August and throughout the series of Warrior Woman, as well as the team behind um, everything that we've seen throughout these series. It is an, a critical uh, platform and space to have. So thank you very much. Oh, it is a pleasure and a tremendous honor. And that book you mentioned, it's called The Power of Now? That's correct, yeah. Eckhart Tolle is the author. Oh, wonderful stuff. Exclusive books. I am on my way. Thank you so much to our amazing panelists and also to you for tuning in and for joining us this afternoon. The winner of our 1,000 Rand NGN Field Voucher and our 1,000 Rand Canal Walk Shopping Voucher is... Deborah Gonzalez, congratulations. A round of applause, Deborah. Good at the fam will be in contact with you as to how you are going to get your prize, but I know it's going to be very much needed in these very trying times. Thank you so much to all of you for tuning in. Thank you so much for your questions. I know that we couldn't get to all of them, but it has been an immense and incredible honor for me to sit on this platform and host these wonderful women over the last few weeks. Thank you to each and every one of them for being vulnerable, open, and authentic and hopefully this will continue some more thank you so much also to good up fm and for all of the incredible people that made this happen could not have done it without you and of course to our title sponsor engine for powering us every step of the way hopefully there will be more until then have a beautiful safe afternoon take care of yourself